Now that I have created my mock-up magazine spread and my mock-up website to present my outcomes and put them in the desired context, um, I would like to evaluate both and um, there's a number of things that I feel like I should talk about and really critically evaluate whether I have been successful or not in presenting my outcomes. So the first thing, um, if I go through the process of what I actually did, um, one of the first things that I needed to do was decide how I was going to represent myself. Was I going to come up with a brand name and um, have my work shown under a brand or was I going to just use myself as a designer and me be the brand rather than like an organisation be the brand. Um, so that was one of the things that I needed to figure out first and the other thing was that I needed to come up with a name for my collection of work because designer jewellery um, and designer products they come under collections, um, specific collections. So my jewellery was always designed as a collection, it was always the plan to have multiple pieces. Um, so that was another thing that I needed to sort out first and foremost. So in, in terms of the branding side, I mean, it was always a, doing the presentation section, it was always kind of a battle of, well, how much did I need to do? Because my brief and what I would always set out to do, my main role is I am the designer maker. So in industry, my roles would stop at designing and then making the three dimensional jewellery as the outcome. So the, but the reason why I need to do this is to show that my work fits the desired context. Um, so that is why I thought it would be a good idea to answer those two questions and to mock it up in as the magazine spread and as the website um, because that is how it would be presented to the end user and to the customer. Um, so in terms of the branding side I decided that I was just going to go by my name. Um, I thought it's pointless to come up with, uh, have my work come under the idea of a design company and organisation rather than just myself as the designer maker because I am the one who designed it and made it and a lot of designer, high fashion, um, products and brands, their name is the designer's name. Um, for example, Dolce & Gabbana, Alexander McQueen, their work is represented by their name. So I decided that I was going to do the same because it just makes more sense. Um, so having established that, I came up with uh, the name for the collection Gothic Codona because um, I had a few thoughts I um, but that is the name that I decided to go with so Codona um, if thinking back to my earlier research um, into Gothic Lolita Codona is a male Lolita so if you are interested in street style, um, then, and especially Gothic Lolita subculture, then 
you would probably know that already. So it's pretty self-explanatory without being too boring. Um, because I didn't want a boring name <laughs> to go with jewellery that isn't boring. So I felt that this just matched and it was quite simple and effective. Um, and I wanted to get the gothic emphasis on gothic in there. Um, so that is why I went with Gothic Cadona. It sums up my whole, the whole thing I'm trying to express is summed up in that name for the collection. Um, in order to give the pieces more of a high fashion luxury um, feel, I decided that it was a good idea to name the individual items of jewellery. Um, because when I looked on, when I was doing my research, for example, on the Chanel website, their jewellery, um, their rings and Rolex, they named their collections as well. But um, so anyways, when I was looking at Chanel specifically, they did name their individual items of jewellery. Um, and it just helps to, I mean, it helps the consumer when they're trying to find that specific item that they want. So not only is it good practically, but it just gives the work that sense of high quality and luxury, which is what I'm aiming for. So I decided to name, I wanted simple names because um, I didn't want it to be overly complex so that the customer wouldn't be able to find what they were looking for um, and also in fashion often simple is does equate to more high quality um, so I wanted it to be a little bit edgy but pretty simple um, so the handpiece I decided to name the webbed rings um, pretty much sums up what the piece is about. Um, the whole webbed um, chain and ribbon section was all about capturing gothic architecture, gothic Lolita. So I felt like that was a really fitting, simple name for that piece. Um, the green necklace, um, I decided to call the vine necklace um, for the same reasons um, as the web ring piece um, and the red um, necklace I named the remnants necklace um, because there was this underlying theme throughout my work of remnants and savage and I just felt that the word remnants really captures what the item of jewellery is about as well as it being a very gothic and street style word. Um, then I also had the red mortar pendant, the pewter pendant and the crisscross collection. Um, so they're all pretty self-explanatory so that the consumer can easily find what they're looking for um, and the crisscross was kind of a play on words because um, I just thought that was quite fun um, and I feel that that would really stick in the consumer's mind like oh crisscross and then they'd easily remember what it is and then they'd be able to find it more easily so um, or just recognize it and remember it more easily so that was the thinking behind all of the names um the other thing so once once i had established all of the names i knew that the pieces had individual names and um i my it was going my collection was going to be gothic cadona by lily newbold um so <laughs> Basically, that was the whole branding side built. My uh, the photo shoot day was very very successful. I mean, the 
photographs, the raw photographs that I got from that day were amazing. They captured everything I wanted to capture and they really allowed the jewellery to stand out and just be completely shown off and the whole aesthetic of Gothic Lolita was captured really well and exactly what my work was about was just reflected really well. So I was really happy with the photo raw photographs that I got. So when I went to um, refine and edit them, I was looking for photographs that would be good for um, the magazine spread and photographs that would be good for the website. So the photographs that were going on the website, they were more just focusing on the jewellery. Um, so I had some, I, I chose some zoomed out shots capturing the whole item of jewellery and some close up shots so that when the um, consumer is going through the website they can look at the jewellery properly and see what they're dealing with and see, oh yes I love the detail on that necklace I want to buy it. So. Um, that was the website and for the magazine spread I was looking for more edgy um, poses and edgy pictures that would make slightly more theatrical spread um, to fit the editorial um, style. So once I'd narrowed them down um, to these two different like folders um, I photoshopped the images that I was going to use um, and when I photoshopped them I was really looking for them all to have a similar look and theme so it's important that they they weren't like crazily different like so that the lighting and the saturation uh, was quite similar and I know that I haven't got it completely right um, with all of the images in the magazine spread and all of the images on the website but I did try really hard to have the same theme and mood going throughout all of them so that it felt like it was connected um, and that it would make a good spread and just reflect the concept of the work. Um, so I feel that the photoshop was really good it, it, it meant that I could make the images look more editorial and um, just more refined and high quality for either the website or the magazine spread. So yeah, so I have all of my Photoshop images separate on my USB. Also, um, the InDesign, well, what um, a point to mention is the pieces that I chose for the, after looking through the photographs that I had, the pieces that I chose for my website, I used all of the pieces that I photographed on my website, whereas I didn't use the, um, I didn't use the pewter pendant or the red mortar pendant. In the magazine spread because the kind of images that I got um, from the photo shoot day they weren't that editorial um, and or dramatic by comparison to the images that I had the photos that I had for the other jewelry pieces and um, the the vibe that I was going for for the magazine spread was more extra more edgy more out there so those pieces were quite small and simple so they didn't really fit in um, with that context um, with that presentation method so I have included them on my website because that is something that is still saleable to the customer um, and it shows that I have like a wide range of simpler jewellery versus more complex bigger pieces so um, that is why I chose to do that. Um, so the next thing to talk about was the process of when I was using InDesign to mock up my magazine spread. So I hadn't really used InDesign that much before, um, basically not really at all, um, but I gave it my best shot and um, 
I think that I was able to do a really good job at creating this fake um, magazine spread. So I took into account the sizes of the pages um, and how everything was laid out on the page practically in terms of thinking of how it would be printed and it obviously it can't be too close to the edge because then it will be cut off and it's hard to print and so I did take a lot of things into consideration as well as how the page actually looked aesthetically and how all the colours and everything looked so um, that went really well and I was able to achieve a really effective outcome. Now I had to decide how much information I was going to put on the page um, and I decided to keep it simple like the Saint Laurent adverti pro promotional advertisement in um, Vogue Oms that I found so I liked that look the best so that's what I was aiming for so I just um, I had the the beginning page which had the name of the um, collection, my name and just a really brief description of what this collection was capturing so that then whoever is going through the magazine looking at it knows what this jewellery is about um, and then all I put on the rest of the pages was the name of the piece so that they are able to go to my website and find the piece if that is what they want. Um, yeah so I felt that keep it to a minimum was better um, for this project and for what I am trying to do so that was the magazine spread and the website um, making the website so as I've mentioned in real life get preparing I mean getting the photos and finding the model and doing mocking up the magazine and mocking up the website wouldn't be my role I wouldn't have to do any of that but for the purposes of the project it's important that I do it so that I know that my work fits the context um, and can be presented appropriately for the end user. So um, obviously I tried my best to make it as um, accurate as I could to what it could be like in real life um, on a website and as a magazine spread and I think I did a very good job at giving an idea of what it would be like and at least proving that my work fits the context and can be presented appropriately for the end user so but when I think there are obviously aspects of the website and the magazine spread which could be improved. So the website works really well. I used my research and the ex examples that I found of the bespoke design and makeup Francis Wadsworth Jones and of the way that designer brands laid out their jewellery pages when they were trying to sell and when when they sell their products online so um but the way it's laid out is pretty good like it does the job but there's things I could tweak about it like it's quite writing heavy the writing stands out quite a lot so I mean if I had someone who was doing this for me I would I imagine that they would put more emphasis on the photographs of the actual products and the way that they lay it out would be more professional and would be better and easier to navigate but it just gives an idea of the context and of how it could be presented like the magazine spread obviously um, someone else a professional would be doing that for me in real life so the images would be edited so much better um, but it's just to give 
an idea. So I feel that I have, I've definitely met my role and I've definitely been able to show that my, my work in context and present it in a way that the end use and present it in a suitable way for the clients and customer. Um, so the client will be able to look through the magazine, see my work, and then be able to go onto my website and find what they're looking for. And I think I've done that very clearly. So that's my... Uh, one more thing to note is that I, um, the when I was going through the process of looking through the raw photographs, um, photo using Photoshop, using InDesign, and then um, it was important that I did think about the image sizes, the resolution, and the file type. So I have done that, and I've organised it into different folders in my USB. So. If it was something online then the resolution is 72 ppi whereas if it is going to be printed then it has to be at least 300 ppi so i have because i've done that it shows that i have thought about and got the images to a suitable stage evaluation the of so the presentation that methods that i've done um yeah, and that is the end of my project. So um, it would be good to evaluate my project as a whole now. And um, yeah. <laughs>